And Az is on the, of course, the full Bunker Herald with the uh, Ventari set up there. And Tibbs, now on base, he was actually on Soul Beast there as well. So, you know, that might be a bit of a, he might have a few different choices he might be making. Might be thinking about maybe flipping some stuff around and going for a different build. And of course, Esprit, the French, very famous for their Condi Thief builds. And there he is on that. Going to be matching into Cinder now, who's going to be playing Power Thief. But we also see Misha on that support Tempus with a lot of condition cleanse to handle all of the con Condis coming up from the Worms. Boyce on Reaper to try and crack through those bunkers. Zan on the nades. And that will also be a very good choice. And I think this is something that we are is going to benefit Rank 25. They play an incredibly aggressive, incredibly high DPS composition that might just be what it takes to get rid of these worms. Indeed, and you know, the one thing to note is that we did see Rank 55 perform very, very well against the French worms in the past. And Boyce actually getting some auto attacks and stealth onto the French worms as they do go across here. And I'll go back to my thought in just a second is the team fight coming out here now over towards the dragon we will see the node picked up here for rank 55 and zartak already getting very very pressured onto this renegade build i don't know if he's gonna be able to stay alive for very long he's trying to kite out he does get a heal off he's getting some kills from the rest of his team but the grenade spam coming out from zan the damage coming out from boyce is just too much sin with the follow-up as well and that'll be a kill confirmed on one of the remnants already from rank 55 that's one worm down and Four to go here as Rank 55 look to push into mid now, getting some pressure on a Goku as well. He might not be long for this world. And, ooh, that's going to be two kills picked up. Azurs, let's see if they can find the third and final Revenant here. They're going for it. Sind already going into position to get the decap out on mid. And Azurs is not going to be able to contest that as Abindo has made his way all the way across the map. He's going to be contesting now the Lion node, one versus two. And a pretty strong start here from Rank 55. You can see the power of that uh, that Reaper, really. It, it's almost like shutting down the worms very hard. Both Goku, Azaz, and Zartak kind of got shredded by how much damage Boyce was able to connect using that Reaper, just shredding through the team fight there. And the worms, they, they're going to have to adapt to this because already we see Rank 55 taking a very commanding lead, uh, and especially with this push from Abindo over onto the Lion, denying any kind of point gain uh, from the French worms. Looks like um, Rank 55, though, I, I actually like this. They're going to play this a little bit safe. They're going to retreat a little bit, maybe uh, just give up that node and, re and then go for a push once again. I think they're kind of respecting the French worms and not wanting to throw the game. They also do want to try to avoid allowing the decap coming out at home as Goku is going to get absolutely obliterated here against the Ring 55's team fight. And we do see a spree making his rotation all the way over, but he's going to be mashed by Bendo, so that won't be a decap on Dragon. The kill on Goku is going to allow Ring 55 to continue to push in. And as you said, playing it slightly slower, slightly safe, but they still have the respawns and the map advantage in terms of numbers on their side, especially now with Goku going down. So they will be able to continue to just slowly sort of creep in if they want and push onto the node. However, it does look like they may not be going for that. They might just hold the double node and continue to get kills and not really push onto the node, not worry about it too much, and potentially give themselves up a kill. Tib's going to be a little bit low, but they are not able to find the kill quickly enough, maybe before Goku gets back. So they do need to be careful. Misha with the tornado, and it looks like they're going to retreat and go back towards mid and just hold onto their double node, which, again, I... I'm a little bit surprised considering this is Ring 55 we're talking about. I was expecting them to maybe play a little bit more aggressive, but obviously they haven't played against, and this is what I was going to mention there at the beginning of the game, they haven't played against French Worms with the beginning, uh, or with their triple rev comp. We, I, we saw them play against the double revs last week in the qualifiers, and they did obviously very, very well against them, but I think the swap there to the triple rev, uh, or tri rather triple rev comp, uh, we haven't really seen in the past there. It was the first time we saw it was yesterday. So Ring 55 obviously just making sure that they're comfortable playing into it. And so far, it seems like they do. The decap coming up from Sid now. And we do see a kill picked up as well on Esprit here uh, as the sword is going to be taken out by Zan. And top off now going to be contested by a Bindo in a tips. And this, this is, this is, isn't really working for the French Worms. And to be honest, I, th I think one thing that is, you know, worth noting from this is I think Ultranum is going to be watching this match and kind of be, be, be feeling a little bit scared of rank 55 right now because the French Worms is a team that historically Ultranum has struggled against a little bit. And well, to see rank 55 kind of making be frank fairly short work of them is probably going to be a little bit intimidating uh knowing that numb will eventually have to face them at some point uh in the bracket so you know if the worms aren't able to do something well, here, if they win yeah if they win because you know they well if they win indeed uh but it's it's gonna be a tricky one here and goku once again getting taken out and uh, yeah there's i hate to say it outlook not good here for any french worms fans you know they may have the superior copy pasta but um the worms are really struggling here on this map on Eternal Coliseum. Of course, it is the pick of Rank 35, and we will be going on to the next pick. Uh, you know, after this game, it will be the Worms map pick, but still, um, you know, will they be able to make up that point differential? Will they be able to come back in this game? I do not know. I don't have the critical information just yet, Roy. Indeed, you know, 
obviously the French rooms, uh, you know, one of the stronger teams for sure. We've seen them beat Ultranum. We've seen them do pretty well against pretty much every other team. But, you know, Rainbow Three Five is just a different beast, and they, so far from what I can see, have the strongest team fight out of any uh, team in really almost either region. Obviously, a little harder to match them up against an A, but in general, they're, they're just looking very confident, very competent, and they're able to just crack uh, French rooms like no one else can. And while the French rooms, you know, they tend to not have bad rotations, I feel as though they generally don't rely on the rotations alone to be able to win them games. They generally rely on being able to stall nodes very long and effectively with double revenant, with triple revenant, if that's what happens. Hold the thought for a second as Misha's getting very, very low over at mid, but no, he should be okay. We will see the decap coming out at mid, but side nodes will be traded for that for ring five, and boys a little bit low, but I think Misha will be able to peel him out. So going back to what I was saying, it just, it doesn't really seem like French rooms have an answer for rank 55 being able to just constantly run them down, mow them down with this, this team fight comp. And we finally might see a kill here on Sando. Misha's going to be able to get that easily with the glyph and... So then we'll get back into the map. So again, it's just French rooms don't really ha seem to have an answer. And, and I'm a little bit concerned because, you know, they they lost to the team fight straight up last week. And I was expecting them to maybe try and change something up a little bit. And again, we do see them put this third Revenant in that we didn't really see last week as well um, on this, this bunker build. But it hasn't worked. And I'm a little worried that maybe this is their only strat and they don't really have anything else left. I, I hope that's not the case because I would love to see them try and be a little bit more competitive, certainly in the next map. But right now, Rank 55 is easily winning this game they're controlling everything they've got control over the buffs so far they've got all the kills in the game zero kills so far for french worms and it doesn't look like it's really that close no not really and i, I think what the french worms found and how they found this in previous games is that a lot of uh, teams are, are running comedy service right comedy rev comedy necro right? comedy thief etc and, and of course these revenants are very resistant to that right they have that well huh, literally they have high resistance uptime a lot of anti-condition pressure and that allows them to do that stalling but look at what 55 is playing a power reaper a power thief and a very aggressive power damage holosmith as well we're using that grenade kit that we saw zan uh, kind of popularize a little bit in some of the previous qualifiers and the french worms don't really have much against that. i think the 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 support herald was actually kind of like a tr attempt to counter pick into that i think because it does have protection uptime it's able to share uh, protection using uh, glint to the entire team to try and reduce some of that damage and maybe generate a bit more healing a bit more sustain for the team but it just doesn't seem to be enough from the ruthless aggression of rank 55 and they're going to be closing out this game fairly soon all three nodes soon to be within their possession i think in this game yeah and you know something else that kind of just comes to mind is that ever since rank 55 swapped up their comp i don't think i've seen them really have a close game in the qualifier in i mean obviously they only played one game yesterday or one match yesterday but and now now this game here it, ever since misha went tempest boyce went necro and abindo swapped to kanye rev i don't think i've seen them have a close game i don't think i've really seen them have a hard match and it's very telling that they're performing as admirably on this comp with maybe a week and a half to two weeks of practice on it. And, you know, it's 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 pretty impressive. Obviously, you know, we come to expect very impressive feats from this team, obviously, and these players, of course. But it's very telling that no team so far has been able to find a way to either match their team fight or out-rotate them in any fashion whatsoever. And I wonder if there will be a team and which team that will be to do so. And maybe it won't be an, NA, uh, an EU team at all. Maybe it won't be until we cross regions tomorrow. We might have to wait for that indeed. And a nearly a near miss there on Boyce. Boyce is going to dance it. But Misha very much on point with those glyphs, securing uh, that revive for his team. And yeah, I think, uh, you know, maybe Ultranum will be able to match that team fight. They've demonstrated themselves to be a very, very confident team. But we're not even sure if 55 will even face Ultranum just yet. So we'll have to see about that. And yeah, uh, I think we're going to be seeing uh, we might have to wait until the NA team to see if they can have a pop, find a little bit of a vulnerability in the armor of rank 55 dragons. But I'm afraid this is going to be the dragon eating the worm right now in this first game here on the Eternal Coliseum. And that is going to be GG. Well played. Rank 55 take a 1-0 lead here. And the French worms, they've got a lot of work to do on this second map and need a lot of work. Now, as you say, that certainly is a fair point, right? Esprit is a very formidable thief player in his own right, but, you know, like, if, if you know, aren't able to actually match that, aren't able to compete with the enemy thief, you could end up be almost, like, making it a 4v5, right? Like, if you aren't able to actually at least play into uh, the opposing thief, or at least uh, kind of trade evenly. Ooh, you can this is a pretty interesting start 
or strat here for Ring 55. They've just stealthed up Sin and Zan. So Misha and Boyce are going to be alone on the node in the middle, but they're going to be getting ready to burst if the French worms come out of stealth as they aren't aware that Zan and Sin are there. Misha going down for a second, but no, Zartak already taking quite a bit of damage. He's going to be pretty low. He does get healed back up, but again, there's no dedicated support here really besides the Ventari Rev on the side of the French worms. And it might be a little bit harder for them to stain at a long team fight here, especially considering they are outnumbered four versus three. It's free coming in though to make that even, so it will be four versus four at the moment. Tornado ripping across now from Misha, but so far the Worms have held their own. They're doing a nice job here as Tibbs now makes this, again, a outnumbered fight for them. As we're going to see a Bindo coming in just a little bit later, and a, now we see Zant taking a little bit of pressure. His voice is going to lich up on the node. Sin kind of forced away here. We haven't really seen Rank 55 have much of an advantage here, apart from getting Zartak a bit low, but he's doing a good enough job of staying alive. No, never mind that. He's going to go right into downstate going to be a lot of cleave on top of that. I don't know if the res is going to come out for. There's a stab road there. Both revs going on top of it. Spree there too, but the tornado now for Misha. Going to rip it across, and that's going to be the CC good on the downstate. Zer's not going to be able to go for the res there, and that'll be Zartak confirmed dead. And you can certainly see that, you know, the worms, you can see how the worm strategy really comes through, right? Like that, actually, you can see that, that oh, that looked a little bit scary for rank 55 there. But I think in yep. particular, that renegade, it just gets pressured by power damage quite effectively, right? And, um, you know, even though they are, they were able to at least keep him alive for a little while there, eventually he just cracked. Huge burst damage coming out from Zan and Boyce in particular there, I think. Uh, just eventually shredding him and making him fall over and end up in the down saying, yeah, very difficult for the res. There is no glyph. Uh, available. There is no Tempest for the French Worm, so getting a revive, they almost got it with all their stability uptime, but a really nice tornado coming out there um, from Misha confirms that kill. Of course, they even have two tornadoes. We see Zan actually in tornado form right now because of his Elixir X. It does get immobilized there, uh, which is you know kind of an immobilized tornado. What does that even mean? What's even going on there? Uh, but, you know, as you can see there, Certainly a good opening trade here for rank 55, but this game much, much closer. In fact, the Worms able to at least neutralize the map a little bit, using a spree quite, uh, you know, provide quite a lot of value to them, able to lock down point C. Uh, and now uh, they're going to have to, you know, Abindo forced to leave that team fight to actually reclaim point A for rank 55. And that res is going to come through without that condition revenant. The team fight of rank 55 actually weakened a little bit, but they are going to end up with map possession here in this game, but not quite actually able to, to kill the Worms yet uh, on the middle fight here. Not all of them, only, only one to kill Zartak so far. Yeah, there's double cap here for Rank 55, at least for the time being, unless the French Worms are able to get the decap. And it's interesting that we do see a Bindo leaving to rotate out. They value that that power thief in the team fight maybe a little bit more than a Bindo, or at least they're rotating them, you know, not having the same player in all the time. But we actually see Rank 55 maybe getting a little bit greedy. Boyce and Misha both going to go down here because we've seen players leave this now. It's going to be a Bindo and... A Sinned both on the side nodes. They go for the side nodes and they actually lose the team fight because of that hard out number. It will be all five of the worms there at the same time that Skyhammer comes up too. And maybe a bit of a misplay from rank 55, assuming that they could sustain that three versus five for a little bit longer than they could. Zerz will be following a Bindo in who's going to be able to contest the Skyhammer for now, but he's going to be outnumbered at least for the time being until someone else gets in there. Either Sand or Zan maybe going for the plus, but the CC coming out from that Ventari Rev knockback might eventually get the cap here. And that is obviously very beneficial for the Worms. Going for that Skyhammer would completely neutralize the map. And actually, realizing this, they're going to leave well, Azur's there. Yeah, that's going to be the Skyhammer the confirmed. Bindo just can't stay on Holy note. Shit. The Worms popping off here on the Skyhammer, neutralizing the map. And now they find themselves in a good spot. Are they going to have to troll Goku? Oh, if he dies, that'll be really bad. Everything they worked so hard for would be thrown out of the window. And yeah, there it is. Kill confirmed. Sind and Zan cleaving out very hard with Misha and Point C will now... Oh, oh, oh the nice knockback there actually denying that cap for a little while. But the Worms still maintain control of the map. Actually, a spree getting a great cap on point A. And they actually might find themselves drawing even with rank 55 dragons in a little bit there of Azaz. Is they going to be able to hold that down? However, Sindrana is going to be able to at least neutralize point A temporarily. A spree looking to try and get something. Oh, actually, we do have a DC actually um, from rank 55. Who did we lose there? Who is that? I believe that is Obindo. Obindo's DC. Um, Goku is matching it though. So yeah, uh, yeah that's, you know, that, that's good. We will continue the play then you know uh, uh, you know you, you really do love to see it don't you right like a bit of good sports yeah. from these players here that's absolutely fantastic from the french worms uh, it is actually outside of the restart window so you know we will not be restarting this game but very good to see that respect uh, there from these players a lot of mutual respect i think between these two teams and that's very good stuff and uh tibbs and getting caught there too with a spray two kills have now been confirmed while we wait for a bindo to maybe connect back into the game and you know I mean, actually, in, a, in suppose this goes to a 4v4. I mean, how does this look for the Worms? Like, they actually might be okay in that. They might be able to survive a little bit better, um, potentially, because there will be just less damage about the place. Although the Conditioned Revenant is probably the class they're most confident going up against, so maybe not, actually. Maybe not so good for the yeah, Worms. Yeah, I'm not really sure if it would be better for them 
but it definitely does mean the team fight will be potentially a little bit weaker although we haven't seen a bindo involved in all these team fights either uh and especially because goku as well the one afk he is on a kandi rev build so it's, it's almost the same as a bindo being out although it's going to be a little bit less of a kandi rev build there uh, a little bit less successful, obviously. Zartak being taken out as well. And I think I think one of the big things here, two two things is to note here is is that I think unfortunately the worms just don't really have enough damage in a lot of these team fights with the Mender's amulet from the Renegade. And obviously, you know, they're not always looking for damage, looking kind of to wear their opponents down. But I think Ring 55 are okay with that. I think they can match it. Bindo has returned, by the way. So uh, okay, and Goku has realized this. Uh, but uh, I think the other thing too is that Azur's on this Ventari Rev. One, he is of course going to be trying to support his team in these team fights, but it's not going to be as good as a support as the Tempest will be. And on top of that, I think a, a big thing from this build, a lot of the value from this build is being able to knock opponents off uh, the node, being able to force either a decap or a full cap eventually, as we saw him do with the Skyhammer. And I think the fact that he hasn't really been going for solo nodes here in order to take advantage of that build and get a little bit more impact with the Ventari Rev means that, you know, the build, while again, it is going to be technically their support in these team fights, is going to have a little bit less impact than they would uh, if he was going for maybe solo nodes and 1v1ing or 1v-xing uh, and forcing decaps and, and full caps there with the knockbacks. Absolutely, you know, it, it's, it is more of that, it's kind of like a troll build, as you say, right, like more than necessarily a dedicated support, it certainly has an aspect of that, but, I mean, do you remember when that build was actually, like, everyone was playing that, particularly in ranked, like, when it was, um, I, I unfortunately it, do, yeah, that was a fun build, and the hammer is going to get cleaned up here for 55, they were able to kill Esprit and Zartak there, and, will leave the only node that the worms currently possess back to that neutral state. Zan in a bit of trouble there. Tib's looking to maybe try and finish him up, but he is able to get a good kite there and sort of get his drink, that delicious elixir, restore some of that health and move back out on the map. He's a little bit pressured right now, but with Syndrona by his side, I'm sure he feels very confident. The hammer coming back up very, very soon. I think the worms are going to be looking to target that. The tablet still standing firm, even though Az is, is fully in the downside. But yeah, I think the worms really struggling in this game. They had a bit of a good opener then. I think the disconnect did actually did kind of screw them over in a way. Like, you know, of course, losing a Bindo is really bad for rank 55, but I think uh, the, I think the strategy of the Worms, they need five players to be able to play all of those nodes simultaneously. And a team fight, just not quite good enough to contest into rank 55. Rank 55 now possessing three nodes. The Worms trying to pressure point A a little bit, but they're not going to be able to do it with Misha and a Bindo there. That's quite the duo to get rid of. And there is the three cap. Hammer coming up now. Uh, and is going to be, uh, you know, captured by the red team, I would imagine, at some point uh, in the near future. Uh, Worm Esprit, and he got getting caught there. And I think, is that actually going to be a GG call? Uh, Zartak is not I, I, moving um, at this point. I think that might be a GG. I'm I think sure. the Worms are trolling at this point. They're, they're, they're saying that Esprit is saying that he's going to DC, so Sin has to AFK in map chat. And I, oh. I think... Yeah, okay, you know, I, I like that, you know, that's a little bit of banter there with us. Yeah. The Worms are still playing. Wait, one of them is actually AFK, though. Like, no, wait, what? Zartak is not playing anymore. Like, maybe a bit of a, bit of a disagreement among the Worms. Zartak maybe thinks it's GG, but uh, the rest of the team continuing to actually play. Uh, I'm not really sure about that, but I guess we're going to see the end of this game get played out uh, in any case, rank 5 with just a single node, point A. It's going to be Azaz into Abindo, and I think Abindo actually might get eventually decapped there by the Ventari Reb, so, you know, the knockback. Oh, he dodges the knockback, though, so he's safe for a little while to continue holding this node, but 55 looking like they are winning the rest of the map. Syndrona capping up point C quite handily, and the Necromancer and the Tempest from Amisha and Boyce are going to force the issue on point B, and, you know, that is going to be at 410 points now for rank 55. Five dragons. They'll be accelerating towards the Grand Finals. And actually, winning this game is very significant, of course, Roy, because this means that they are guaranteed a spot in the Global Finals. That is true, and it's not really too much of a surprise, but I think if there was a team to stop them from getting there, it might have been the French Worms. That being said, French Worms will now be going down to the lower brackets, the lower bracket finals, to face Ultranum. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a match I'm looking forward to. Obviously, the French Rooms uh, suffering a pretty heavy defeat here at the hands of Rank 55, but they have beaten Ultram in the past, and they definitely could do it again. So we will see if they're going to be able to repeat that, or if Ultram are going to be able to perform a little bit better than we've seen from them in the past and match the French Worms and, and match really what Rank 55 did here. And I also will say, I think that this would be a really good opportunity for the French Rooms to kind of test out a different strat potentially uh, into a team fight comp, just because it's pretty much the same comp that Ring for the five play, just the core necro over the Reaper. But of course, that is a risk they may not want to take, as it will be, you know, the the difference between them getting to those global finals or getting knocked out. And so they may want to just play it safe and, and maybe save some strat changes for tomorrow. So we'll see what exactly. happens. I mean, but that is, yeah, GG called there. And I, I believe that's that's going to be uh, that's going to be the two zero for Ring for the five.
It absolutely is. And well, you know, you never you never know with the French worms. You know, they are, I think, you know, I believe a, a spree messaged me uh, early this morning and he just sent me the eyes emoji, in fact. Um, so you never really know what's going on with the French worms. They might have a little bit of, bit of a secret strat that we might see come out. I really have no idea what we might end up witnessing um, from that team. Who knows? We'll have to check it out in a little bit. But yeah, the French worms are now going to go directly to the lower bracket. And I believe the next game is going to be Ultra Numb versus is the French Worms in the lower bracket final. Oh, and that's going to be another elimination match. My goodness me, and that is going to be really heating up there. Ultram and French Worms, I'm anticipating a very, very close match between those two teams. We're going to get that those maps picked up very, very soon. But there you go. You can see that match about to happen.